Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile sample paper discussions. We are in chapter 2 talking about Agile testing principles, practices and processes. And today we shall look forward to continue with another few questions from this chapter of the set B to help you understand better about the context and concepts of the examination that how you can better get them through. Well, the next question on our list is the question number 16. It talks about what does it mean when a feature is classified as done? Now, I think we are just trying to correlate with respect to uh, the status and migration of different objects within the uh, Agile methodology. And there are certainly different status which represents the current ongoing you know, practices and ongoing status of any work. And we do use different names for them, like to do, in progress, and done. And generally, the done certainly means that all the work has been completed on it and can be moved to a final station on the board, which justifies that the work which was assigned to the team has been completed. So certainly, you can have any number of status in between compared to that of the other, you know, uh, parent status. But some of these status, including like to do, in progress and done are pretty much standard and they talk about to do means something which is yet to be done in progress means the work is in progress and someone is working in the team on that particular work item and done just represents that the work which was happening has been completed so all they're trying to ask you from this particular question is what does it mean when a feature is classified as done and let's have a look on the options option a says it has been developed now because after development also there are certain set of activities which needs to be performed like testing, right? So similarly, we have option B, which says it has been developed and integrated, which is still a part of the way, but not certainly talking about all the activities which can be completed. And uh, option C says it has been developed, integrated and tested, uh, makes better sense, but let's cross check with D because it has more items than C. D says it has been developed, integrated, tested and released to production no 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 that's not correct the last part released to production happens once together at the end of the release but at every single sprint you may have a feature being completed or a particular story item getting completed so done is a status which is only limited to internal part but not going into the production so in that context put together the right answer here for this question is C, it has been developed, integrated, and tested is the meaning of when a feature is marked as done. Well, let's move on to the next question here, question number 17. It says, if your Agile team has an ongoing need for specialized testers to conduct performance testing, which organization structure would, you, would be most effective? I think uh, we would need to talk about this once again. If your Agile team has an ongoing need for specialized testers to conduct performance testing. Okay, that's great. We are looking forward to have testers who are specialized in performance testing. Which organizational structure would be most effective? All right. So this question is coming in from uh, the organizations of the team and structure. So if you remember, we had discussed on centralized, distributed, insourced, outsourced, or even understanding how the additional member of the teams can be working externally to the uh, agile teams and uh, sometimes they can be embedded sometimes they can just be external but working parallelly with the team or maybe they will be just associated at the end of collection of sprints like at the end of the release so let's have a look what options we are talking about because this question is completely driven by the options and if the options are right then we get to the understanding of what they're looking for Option A says the Agile team has people who have been designated as the testers for a sprint or set of sprint. I think we are talking about specialized testers and generally these specialized testers are not a part of the team right from the day one because they don't really have a need of one and they, they can only perform performance testing when it has collection of features stabilized together after system testing. So having Agile team being embedded with performance testers are not something which is recommended as an organization of the structure organization structure so agile team has people who have been designated as a tester for a sprint of set of sprints that does not make 
uh, the possibility of having someone without any work. B. The Agile team has independent testers who join the team at the end of the sprint. Make a good sense, but uh, I'm not sure if that's only the right answer because we will have to see if the other two options are really bad. <laughs> Let's have a look on C. The C option says a separate and independent test team furnishes testers to the Agile project's team as, a need, uh, as needed based on the skills and required. Uh, looks more relevant compared to B because um, having independent tester within the Agile team would again engage them right from the day one, but they may not have any contributions made to the you know possible day-to-day -day activity because performance testing is a specialized testing and is certainly required at the end of the you know release or somewhere when we are closer to release when we have an established uh, system to check for performance. So uh, in that context, we would rather prefer saying that a separate and independent test team would be only required at the point when we need them and they should have the specialized skills, not just like the functional testers or other testers which are required on day-to-day -day basis. So C looks a little better, but let's go and check on D. The testing is outsourced to an external company with performance test expertise. That's the most important and interesting option, but the reason I won't pick it up as the right answer is because having an external team could talk about the drawbacks of having highly independent team, like they can be lacking some important information, they can have lack of collaboration, or sometimes they will be completely isolated, so they cannot be easily so at a base, uh, you know, contractual issues can happen, and many other things can certainly be considered as heavy drawbacks compared to the benefits of it. So in that context, when it comes to Agile, we just can't look forward to have so many drawbacks related to our testing activity as, a, as and when it is a part of our scope. So in that context put together, the right answer here is C, a separate and independent test team furnishes testers to the Agile projects or team as needed based on the skills required. That makes total sense that how we can organize non-functional testing in Agile methodology. Well, moving on to the next one, and that's question number 18. What is the benefit of testers' independence in Agile Met project? So now, just now we spoke about a question on how to organize the independent testers, or sometimes the specialized testing can be organized uh, at a later point of time. But this time, we're talking about what is the benefit of having an independent testing team within the Agile projects. Mm -hmm. So first of all, a quick context. Independent testing is all about a person testing the system should be different from the person who is developing the system because given that they are independent they will be able to find different defects than the person who created it and we also know that the psychology of testing says that it is uh, not so easy for every individual to find mistakes in their own work so we need someone else to correct your work or look into your work review your work and find out anomalies related to that so all right, so let's look at the options related to this particular question and we'll try to understand what makes more sense at this point of time when talking about the independent testers. So the very first option here, they say that the independent tester is able to provide an objective evaluation of the quality of the product and quality of the product being tested. So yes, just now we discussed about the context and that certainly makes a lot of sense that what exactly it is needed in order to test a system. B, the independent tester is able to rely on testing performed by the developers. No, that's, that's what we want to overcome by having an independent test team because a developer is a human being again where we said that a human being doesn't have capability of finding all their common mistakes. C, the independent tester may have relationship issues with the agile team that is accustomed to working together. No. Uh, that's basically seen as a drawback, not as a benefit. Because as we work very closely with developers, we may lose our sense of quality and finding defects. So that could be seen as a challenge, not as a benefit. But D, the independent testers can provide project management skills as well as testing for the project. Uh, no, come on. The test engineers are just test engineers and they're not providing any kind of project management skills to any of the team or team member or organization. So... I think it's it's very very easy relevant if you understand the concept uh, context of independent testing you can very well correlate and come to the conclusion that the right answer here is a 
the independent tester is able to provide an objective evaluation of the quality of the product being tested. And that's one of the important benefit of having independent testers in an agile project. So put together, that's all what we had from this particular tutorial team. We just covered three questions and we are just taking baby steps to make sure that you have a wonderful experience of learning things and understanding the tips and tricks of the examination. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.